Amen. Good evening, Zoom family. Family here. We're going to be in Acts chapter 3 tonight. Acts chapter 3. All right, Acts chapter 3 and verse number 1. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour, and a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fasting his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I, to, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood, and walked, and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God, and uh, all the people saw him walking and praising God. Um, I'd like to bring you a message tonight called Stand, Walk, Leap, and Praise. Uh, I couldn't think of a better title, and it seemed like a, a natural outline here, so that's what I want to uh, address tonight. Uh, the man in this passage is a type of, uh, uh, a type or picture of a person that's lost in trespasses and sins, and he trusts the Lord Jesus Christ as his Savior, and he's miraculously born again. Now, uh, that that's a type or picture. So, well, there's some things that don't fit. Well, all types are like that. And Joseph was one of the greatest types of Christ in the Bible, but he lied about the cup. Uh, the Lord's not going to lie. Uh, David's a great type of Christ in the Bible, probably the second greatest type of Christ in the Bible, but he committed adultery and murder. Uh, the Lord wouldn't do that. But um, this fellow is a type of a lost sinner that, that gets saved. And uh, there's, some, there's some things that, that he does after this healing. Um, notice that he was, he was lame from his mother's womb. He was born that way. Uh, there in verse 2, a certain man lame from his mother's womb. David said over there in Psalm 51, verse 5, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Doesn't mean that she sinned in the conception, but when he was conceived, he was a sinner. Now, we're all born into sin. In Romans 5, 12, Paul said, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon me, all men, for that all have sinned. Uh, he was born that way. Amen. I've heard people uh, use that as an excuse for enjoying their particular sin. Well, I was born this way, or I, I'm, I'm given to this. I was born that way, or whatever. Well, let's just say for the sake of argument that you were that you were born that way. All right, just for the sake of discussion. Right? I mean, uh, your, your particular sin. Um, you, you definitely were born messed up. And the Lord said you must be born again. So, yeah, okay. <laughs> Maybe you were born with a particular proclivity uh, leaning toward a certain sin uh, i was born to be a fornicating drunk okay i mean <laughs> so what you don't do that you get saved you get born again whatever your proclivity is uh, yeah you was messed up but uh, secondly if you were born if you were just for the sake of argument do you want to stay messed up That'd be kind of stupid, wouldn't it? I mean, you're you're born with cancer, and somebody's got a cure for it. Well, I ain't gonna take that cure because I was born. It's why it ain't my fault. Well, that's kind of stupid, isn't it? Well, sure it is. Whatever way you were born, um, 
the the you you can get saved and get the, the victory over that. I, I think some people's problem they just enjoy that whatever way they were born, they don't want to be cured from it. Uh, Paul said over there in First Corinthians six nine, know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But you're washed, but you're sanctified, but you're justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. You don't have to stay that way. Uh, you might have been a drunkard, a fornicator, a feminine, a dog, or whatever. But when you get washed in the blood, that stuff's cleaned up. You don't have to be that way anymore. Uh, this man had been in this condition uh, for, look over at chapter 4 and verse 22. Peter and John get in trouble for uh, healing him in the name of the Lord and preaching to the crowd that gathers around. They get called up for the council. In verse 22, the Bible says, this man was above 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing was showed. 40 years old. He'd been like that uh, from his mother's womb. He was born that way. You realize what that means? Um, at the time this event took place, this healing took place, it was just a few weeks after the crucifixion and resurrection. How old was the Lord Jesus Christ when he was crucified? 33 and a half. This dude's over 40 years old. I'm not real good at math, but if he's over 40 years old and this is just a few weeks past the crucifixion, he was born before the Lord was. Born lame, right? Born from his mother's womb. He's that way from his mother's womb. 33 and a half years of the Lord's life, he was lame. After the crucifixion resurrection, he's lame. A few weeks after the resurrection, he's lame. Um, notice that our text says that verse 2, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful. The gate's called beautiful. Laid daily. Doesn't say how long that he had been laid daily there, but I would imagine it'd been a while. You reckon the Lord ever came into that temple while he was laying there? Chances are awfully good. <laughs> the apostles, they're going in there. Reckon why this guy never got healed? Well, for one thing, and it may be the main thing, he never was looking to be healed. He was wanting money. You ever talk to somebody that uh, some of these panhandlers or beggars or bums, or whatever you want to call them, you ain't supposed to call them that. That's what most of them are. They're, they're bums. They don't want to get a job. We'll work for food. They don't want to work for me. They want you to give them money. Most of the time, maybe some of them will, but um, this dude was looking for money. I would imagine when the Lord came in there, he could probably tell he wasn't financially well off, right? He was, he was poor. He didn't, didn't own any a house. He didn't own anything. He, he told the apostles one time, he said, the, or a couple of them wanted to follow him. He said, the birds of the air have nests, the foxes have holes, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. He slept outside over there in John chapter 7, the Mount of Olives. So this beggar probably look at him coming in the temple, and Jesus went to the temple a lot. And he probably thought, well, I'm not going to get anything off him. Because that's what he's asking for, alms. Matter of fact, he wasn't even thinking of being healed when the apostles came through there. He's wanting money. And uh, Peter told him, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I to thee. Amen. <laughs> I wonder how many times um, or how many people for years and years 
live next door to a church or live next door to a Christian or work with a Christian or drive by a scripture sign or see bumper stickers or hear a gospel witness for years and years and years and years and never get saved until 40 years later. Oh, <laughs> that would make me think that it would behoove us to be faithful and continuing to be a good witness and continue to get out tracks, continue to live for the Lord because you never know. Like I said, this guy wasn't interested until a certain time. The best thing you could do for somebody is to give them the gospel. People say, well, they're not going to listen to you unless you give them money or give them food. Or Man, the, the best thing you could do to, to be a friend to somebody is to give them the gospel. I've heard people say that, and, and I've done it before. I've, I've given food to, to folks and given them a track and witness to them. But really, you know, that's the best thing you do to show that you care is to give them the gospel. Peter said, I, don't, I ain't got no silver and gold, but what I got, I give you. Rise up in the name of Jesus Christ and walk. Supposedly, four or 500 years ago, 600 years ago, however long it was, uh, Thomas Aquinas. Aquinas, every how you say it, was uh, with uh, one of the popes at, at, in Rome, and the pope was counting out his gold and silver. And he told him, he said, "See, Thomas, he said, we can, the church can no longer say silver and gold have I none." And they had a big old stack of it there on the table. And Thomas Aquinas told him, "Yeah, and you can't say any more. Rise up and walk either." You don't have any power. You got the the gold and the silver. You got the wealth, but no power. But his lame beggar was healed. It's a picture of salvation. Uh, when he was healed, he was healed immediately. When you got saved, you were saved immediately. You were born again. And Jesus Christ said, "Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, condemnation, but is passed from death." Unto life, and it happened that that quickly, immediately. That's uh, when you got saved. You don't grow into it. You're not born into it, so to speak. Uh, you were when you trust the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior and believed on Him. You were born again. Uh, he was healed immediately. But there's some steps that He took that are the same that a child of God should take in His pilgrim journey after He's healed immediately. He stood, he walked, he leapt, and he praised God. And I'd say if you're, uh, if you're not doing those four things as a child of God, uh, a great deal of the blessings of the Christian life, you're missing. Uh, thank God for the healing. Thank God for salvation. There's, I'm not downplaying that at all. Uh, but just to continue to be a beggar, like he had always done would have been a shame, right? I mean, he he could he could have just sat there being healed and continued to be a beggar. Now, thank God for salvation. Thank God for being saved from hell. I got saved because I didn't want to go to hell, but it didn't stop there, and nor should it with anybody that's get gotten saved. Um, it's, there, there should be a, I don't want to say natural progression, but maybe supernatural progression for a child of God for growth. Um, first of all, uh, God expects us to stand, stand. Uh, the Bible says there when, when, uh, when he saw Peter about to go in the temple, he asked alms and Peter fastening his eyes on him. Uh, told him silver and gold have I none. He took him by the right hand in verse seven, lifted him up immediately. His feet and ankle bones received strength, and he leaping up stood. He stood. Uh, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 11 to 14, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, 
Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. You get the idea? We need to stand. One of the first things that a young Christian needs to learn how to do is to stand. Stand for, st uh, for something. Stand against something. Uh, having done all, stand. You need to do that. Uh, you need to be able to stand up for the truth. You need to be able to stand against wickedness. You need to be able to stand with other believers. You need to learn how to stand as a child of God. Um, at the, during World War II, there was a Christian in Germany. His name was Dietrich Bonhoeffer. How many of you have ever heard of him? Bonhoeffer. Bonhoeffer. <laughs> he was imprisoned for basically taking a stand against Hitler. Um, I saw a news article the other day that coming out with a movie with uh, referring to Von Braun in it somehow, Warner Von Braun, and they're getting a bunch of heat because he was a Nazi in the SAS. And I'm going to tell you something. If you was in Germany in World War II, you'd probably be a Nazi too. Amen. If he's the right age and the right gender, you'd probably be in the SS. So I wouldn't. I would have stood against that stuff. Yeah, you'd have lost your job. You lost your family. Now I'm not. I'm not saying you wouldn't have. You might have had the guts enough to do it. Doubt it, but you probably you probably would have caved just like everybody else did. Now Von Braun, I've read his biography. And yes, he was in the SS. Yes, he had the Nazi card, but I, I'm not sure I would say he was like an upper echelon Nazi like Hitler and some of his goons were. I think it was just to be able to get a job, be able to get food. Could be wrong. But anyway, Bonhoeffer stood up against Hitler and uh, he continued uh, to uh, encourage other believers to stand up and uh, resist the Nazi tyranny and a group of Christians. He was so influential. They were afraid that he would get killed and eventually he did. Hitler had him killed, but they, they said, um, they, they, they asked him why he exposed himself to such danger. He said that, you know, as bad as it is in world war two, uh, the Lord's surely going to come back soon. <laughs> uh, don't expose yourself to danger. And he told him, if the Lord returns tomorrow, then tomorrow I'll rest from my labor. But the day I have work to do, I must continue the struggle until it is finished. End quote. He stood. And of course, Hitler killed him. But, all right, the, the Nazis did, but he stood. They called uh, Martin Luther up on charges to defend his uh, 95 thesis at the Diet of Worms. And uh, he, at the end of that thing, low battery, do we need to plug it in? At the end of that thing, he said, uh, here I stand, I can do no other. Stand, stand. First Corinthians 16, 13, Paul said, watch ye, stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men, be strong. Galatians 5, 1, he said, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Somebody said, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Amen. Stand. Here I stand. I believe one of the main reasons why Christianity in general is in such sorry shape, in such a sorry shape that it is, because preachers... Uh, haven't stood like I should. I'll, I'll put the fault on the pulpit. It's apostasy. The, the, the definition of apostasy, apostasy is to fall from a standing position. Apostasize. As somebody that, that had stood at one time and then fell from it for whatever reason. In 2 Timothy 2, 3, Paul said, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. And those two things have taken place. The son of perdition is Judas, and we're experiencing the falling away now. We're, modern Christianity, to me, you ever seen those fainting goats when you make a noise or scare them? 
they, they, their legs lock up and fall over. Modern Christians today, instead of sheep, are more like fainting, <laughs> fainting goats. They get scared and just fall over. Hey, man, stand. Stand. Learn how to stand. Stand for something. Um, Philippians 4 1, Paul said, Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved, and long for my joy and crown. So stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. In 2 Thessalonians 2 15, therefore, brethren, stand fast. And hold the traditions which you have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Stand. Don't let, don't let everything just slide by. It don't matter. It's end times. Everybody else is doing it. Whatever the thing is, stand. Stand for the truth. Stand for the traditions that Paul delivered. Um, there's some things worth standing for. Uh, stand up for the Lord. Stand up for the liberty that we have. Uh, uh, don't uh, uh, don't cave in. All right, this this uh, fellow after he was healed, he stood, and then uh, the the second thing after that was he walked, walked. Amen. The Bible says over in Romans chapter six verse four. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk. And newness of life. There's a there's a new walk for the believer. I would imagine this guy um, was pretty excited about his walk, being lame from from birth and over forty years old, uh, starting to walk. I would imagine he had a new. Uh, is it cold in here? You? It's cold to me. If, uh, if you want to turn the heat up, so it's usually hotter up here. I took my jacket off. But um, this dude, um, he, he, he got a newness of life, a new walk, if you would. Uh, I don't know exactly what was going on here, but it looks like that he couldn't walk uh, at all in any way, shape, or form, whether with a cane or a walker or uh, holding on to something. The Bible says there in verse two, a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried whom they lay daily at the gate of the temple. He couldn't even uh, walk stooped over or walk any kind of his own volition. He had to be carried. I imagine he's pretty excited about being healed. Amen. And being able to be, uh, to walk on his own and um, walking in, a different way, a newness of life. In Romans chapter 8, verse 1, Paul said, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. You as a child of God, once you were healed, once you were saved, once you were born again, once you was regenerated, once whatever you want to call it, when you pass from death to life, you became a new creature in Christ and you're supposed to walk uh, according to the spirit in newness of life and not after the flesh. So what is that? Well, there's all different kinds of ways to walk after the spirit or different elements of walking in the spirit. Like in Romans 13, 13, he said, let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy. You can walk in all those, or you can walk honestly. In 1 Corinthians 3, 3, he said, For you yet carnal, for, as, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are you not carnal and walk as men? So you're not supposed to walk in, as, uh, as men, as the old man, as the flesh. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, we walk by faith and not by sight. What is that? You believe what the Lord said and walk accordingly. Whether everybody else is doing it or not. Galatians 5, 16. For this I say then, walk in the spirit. You shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Galatians 5, 25. For we live in the, if we, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Ephesians 4, 1. I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you're called. John said in 1 John 1, 6 and 7, if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. 
But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. There's all kind of components and elements of walking in the spirit. It's kind of scratched the surface of it there. But the idea being is that you, you stand and then you walk. Somebody said your, your talk talks and your walk talks, but your walk talks louder than your talk talks. Something that affect the idea being that you can say what you believe, and but it's more convincing if you walk what you believe, if you do what you believe. If you do what you profess, then I'll believe what you say. But if you just say you believe something and you don't walk accordingly, I got my doubts. Amen. All right, stand, walk, and leap. Notice there in verse 8, the Bible says, He leaping up, stood, and walked, and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. He went with them into the temple. Up until this time, he'd just been outside of it. He got saved. He wanted to go to church. <laughs> I guess he didn't have Zoom back. No, I'm kidding. Thank God for Zoom. Thank God. I appreciate it us having that and being able to do that, but it, it shouldn't take the place of meeting with God's people if at all possible. Thank God that, you know, that we have that when it's not possible. I've used it myself. But anyway, he, uh, he leaped. Yeah, you know, that right there is a miracle in itself. Amen? I mean, he, he stood and walked and leapt. That's a bona fide miracle. You ever... You ever been bedridden for any length of time or know somebody's been bedridden? Like at the hospital, if you're in, in the hospital for several weeks, they had to put you through physical therapy or get you up and, like if you had an operation or something, they'll, they'll walk you. But if you've been bedridden for whatever reason, you got to go through physical therapy to basically relearn how to walk. This dude, immediately after being lame for over 40 years, is able to stand up and walk and leap. It's a miracle. I had to put some cabinets in today, some base cabinets in the kitchen. And I had to get down on the floor. <laughs> and uh, I was sitting like Indian style. Is that? Is it okay to say that? When I was a kid, we said Indian style, cross-legged, whatever it's called now. I don't know, cross-legged. And uh, I was uh, putting some screws in the fillers and putting the doors back on, you know, doing pretty good. And I got done with it. I, I had to stand up and was like, huh. <laughs> yeah, man, I had to work out some soreness there. and some get, I call it getting stove up. But it was like, when I got up, it was like, it was, I couldn't have left <laughs> and I hadn't been lame for 40 years I couldn't have left for a few seconds or maybe a few minutes after I've been sitting there for all that time on that floor like that this dude was able to stand and walk and leap having never walked in his life for over 40 years that's a bona fide miracle. He didn't have to learn how to walk. He didn't have to go through physical therapy. He didn't have to use a cane or a walk or crutches until he learned how to get along with his new healing. Um, I remember when I was a teenager, I used to watch Ernest Ainsley. He was a, a, faith, a faith healer. So I'm going to say faith healer in quotation marks. He said, you believe in healing? Yeah, I do. I believe in healing. I just don't believe in healers. Healing is an apostolic sign, and the apostles have all faded out of uh, their ministry, and there's no more apostolic healing. But anyway, Ernest Ainsley, he, he, he was funny to watch. I don't know if I have him on YouTube now. If you could ever watch an Ernest, Ernest Ainsley uh, healing, it's kind of funny. But anyway, he had, he had this uh, young man up there who was going to heal that was I think it was mute, and he put his 
fingers in his ears and he had wiggle in his and he said, Be healed. Do what? May have been, may have been deaf and dumb. But he, he put his fingers in his ears and he said, Be healed. And he'd look at him and say, Say Amen. <laughs> and that kid said, Baby. <laughs> he said, Say Amen. He's like, Baby's reading his lips. And he thought he was saying, Baby, say Amen. <laughs> and heard the same thing. <laughs> so he's healed, but it takes time to learn. The, the language there it takes time for these things. I thought, yeah, you faker. When in the Bible, when they healed somebody, they were healed immediately. All right, anyway, this lame man was leaping. The natural or supernatural progression for your faith should graduate into you leaping after you've stood and after you walked. And so, what is that? I'm glad you asked. It's a picture, a type of being able to uh, put up with some persecution. Some suffering, some enduring hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. In Luke chapter 6, verse 22, the Lord Jesus Christ speaking, said, Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you, and cast your name as evil, cast out your name as evil, for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice ye in that day, and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in the like manner did their fathers under the prophets. It's a, a picture, a type of somebody that's being persecuted and suffering and being able to put up with it. Is it late for joy? That's a good thing. You're going to get some rewards in heaven for that. Uh, the apostle Peter in Acts chapter 5, over there in verse 41, said they departed from the presence of the council rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name and daily in the temple and in every house they cease not to teach and to preach Jesus Christ. Your spiritual growth should get to the point where persecution and ridicule and people hating you and casting out your name as evil and separating you from their company should not affect your ability to witness for the Lord Jesus Christ and preach the gospel. Amen. Matter of fact, you ought to be glad and rejoice when you, that you're counted worthy to suffer for his sake, suffer for his name. All right, last of all, verse number eight, the, the next progression is the walking, leaping, and praising God. <clears throat> Ultimately, folks, that is why the Lord saved us. I'll be honest with you. I got saved to get out of hell. God had a different motive for saving me. I'm just looking at it like fire escape. He's, he's looking at it like I'm going to have somebody down there that will praise me for that salvation that I'm giving him and adopting him into my family and conforming him to the, be the image of my son. In Psalm chapter 30, verses 11 and 12, David said, Thou hast turned for me my mourning into dancing. Leaping. That's a type of dancing. Amen. Thou hast turned for me my mourning into dancing. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. To the end. To the end. To the end. What was the purpose? To the end that my glory may sing praise to thee and not be silent. O oh Lord my God, I will give thanks unto thee forever. The Lord saved you. <clears throat> his, his reasoning for that was for you to sing praise to him and to give thanks for him and to walk in gladness because of what he's done for you. In Ephesians chapter 1 Verses 4 to 6, Paul said, According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us under the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Now listen, folks, if if you're saved and you haven't developed or grown in your Christian walk to the point where you can praise God, there's something missing in your spiritual life. 
You need to be able to stand, to walk, to leap, and to praise God. What, which one are you on? Have you fully developed into the praise of his glory? Are you stuck back there? Uh, I've seen a lot of folks seem like they got healed, got saved, and they just kept on begging. <clears throat> just, kept sit- <clears throat> just kept sitting there. It's possible. I mean, this dude could have been completely healed and just sat there and continued to beg. <laughs> it had been a waste, but it could have happened. But he didn't. He stood up. He walked. So he left. And he praised God. God help us to follow that example, to emulate that example. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we're so thankful uh, for your word. We're thankful for the example of this lame man that was healed and um, stood, walked, leapt, and praised thee. And pray that you'd help us Lord, to do the same thing. Now, be it the prayer request. Take care of the need in each one of them. Watch over us, Lord, as we go our separate ways and dismiss us with your blessings. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. You're dismissed.